So my best friend and I uh, grew up, we would spend hours and hours biking. We had to bike because our parents were all working and there was no way for us to get to each other's house, which was about seven to 10 miles away from each other. So we would call on the old school phones and say, hey, I'm taking off. And he would go, all right, I'm taking off too. And we, would, we knew the route. And so we would always meet at kind of the same place, depending who was faster <laughs> that day. And uh, it worked out great. And from there, we decided what we were going to do. Nine times out of 10, it was to go another 10 miles or so to the library and just hang out at the library. Now that was a lot of fun. So uh, we'd go to the library and we'd have a great time. Well, um, then uh, we were living out in the country at the time. And uh, for uh, various reasons, we decided to move into town. So uh, we moved into town the summer before I started high school. And my friend, we were the same age. So the summer before we started high school, I moved into town. Now, that didn't change much because really we were just exactly the same distance apart, but I was on the other side now. <laughs> so uh, the same thing happened all summer long. Hey, I'm about to take off. Okay, I'm about to take off too. And so there we would go. We'd meet in the middle. Now, this summer, because we were going different routes, we started to get to explore a little bit. One of the places that we noticed was we were always crossing this creek on a bridge. And right under the bridge, in big, big letters, it said no swimming. Because as the water went through down past the bridge, if you turned the other way and looked upstream, there was a pasture and cows were wandering back and forth through the pasture and I, uh, through the creek, actually. And I don't think they bothered to stop and wonder where they were doing their cowly things that smelled and you know so it probably wasn't that safe to swim at that point so um, but what we uh, you know we, we started to do you know being being us we we actually just looked and that, that's all it was we were just curious and so we noticed maybe two car lengths off of the road there was a plum tree and it was just outside the fence of the farmer that was right next to it and so we thought yeah Let's go try some plums. They look good today. So we went and tried some plums. Well, uh, we realized that we had actually walked down a bit of a trail. And you couldn't really tell it was a trail until you got down there. And then you realized it kept going as a trail. And of course, we had to wander a little farther and a little farther and a little farther. And uh, so we're just kind of taking this windy trail that follows pretty much the edge of the creek. So uh, one day, we wander far enough that uh, we notice most of the creek is uh, is got high dirt walls and and the water is you know pretty far down uh, you know maybe one of our heights at the time and so uh, it was pretty hard to get to the water and we really didn't even consider it uh, until we got far enough down the trail that we saw um, where the it had um, collapsed in and made a little beach. Well, it wasn't really a beach, it was mostly mud, and the mud was just amazing. <laughs> because you could walk out on the mud, and it was just dark, moist dirt at first. But if you stood around on the mud and danced and moved your feet around a little bit, it would soften up a little bit more, a little bit more, and water would come from somewhere and ooze in. And pretty soon you had a really yucky, gooky mud that would stick to your shoes, and it was just amazing. Well, it's summertime, and we didn't want to get our shoes cleaned every single time, so when we went there the next time, we just took our shoes off. And uh, then we would wander out into the water a little bit before we left, wash our toes off, and, and skedaddle out of there when it was time. And then we realized, uh, one time we came down, and the water was down just a little bit lower, I think, and, uh, and a sandbar had emerged just past the mud. And the mud had dried up, so the mud was boring, but we saw the sandbar, and we thought, ooh, this is fun. I wonder if we could dam this little creek with sand. And so being little scientists, engineer, curious kids, uh, you know, we thought, all right, let's go. So we got down on our hands and knees and started scooping the sand and trying to, it didn't didn't work at all. We got sand everywhere though, and being boys, we got sand in each other and on each other and through each other. 
And so we decided that day that we were going to have to go over into the deep part of the creek and uh, wash uh, the sand out of all of the various crevices. <laughs> so we did. We just kind of sat down and did that. And then uh, the next day we came again. And uh, this time uh, when we were uh, washing off, uh, I don't know why we were going a little bit early, but we decided. And uh, I just kind of laid back a little bit more and realized I could float. And when I floated, um, I moved because it's a creek. You're going down the road, down the downstream. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. So I leaned back and, and floated. And that was, you know, with, with my hands, I hadn't figured out how to actually move myself in water. So that was actually the very first time I was looking up at the sun and watching the clouds and the sky and everything shift as I was moving through water. And it was just amazing. And I told my friend, this is really fun. All you gotta do is just lean back a little more. And so he did, he tried, uh, and he didn't float as easily as I did. I don't have some of the muscles and yeah. So uh, I floated and down, uh, down we went, down the thing. And when it was time to stop, it was a low enough creek that uh, all we had to do is just sit. Well, um, most places that was all you had to do because if you got into one of those narrow places where the water was really rushing it washed all of the sand away and if you sat you would bounce over rocks <laughs> so we learned quickly not to stop there that was all um, but we kept going we would go farther and farther uh, each time floating now we didn't even bother with the sand or the, anything we'd just leave leave uh, whatever we had shoes and socks up there and we just lay back and float and we decided one day we had all day and we decided to see how far we could go because we knew the creek came out at the main main highway at the other side of town um, and so we knew it had to go through so as we're doing this we do, we go down and then we start to realize things when the when the creek spreads out it gets really shallow and you have to stand up and walk for a little ways you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to float because there's only you know it, it just spreads out and uh, so we're doing this uh, pretty regularly and then uh, at one point we come down and uh, I realized that even though it had widened out quite a bit it was actually getting deeper and deeper and uh, so I sat up and that's when my ears let go of the water and I heard rushing water ahead of us rushing water uh -oh. so I looked up stood up as fast as I could and uh, realized that they some uh, someone had come along and put a cement wall all the way across the creek and uh, and then out of that cement wall they had cut a notch about the size of two teenage boys <laughs> and that was what all the water was rushing through but it was also just enough to back it up and make this kind of a big area so uh, it was no problem I thought well we got we, we're not going to go through that that's going to cause trouble so let's just backpedal so I started backpedaling. Well, it turned out I had done all of the observing too slow and too late. And when I tried to backpedal, the sand just flew out from under my feet. And I could not back up fast enough. And again, I was not a good swimmer yet. And so I couldn't get back. And so, and neither could my friend actually. Although he was doing better at getting, he saw it soon enough that he actually was able to scoot around to the side. So he's going along the bank, and it's actually back to being the steep wall banks, and so he couldn't just climb out. And so I said, uh, can you get up to the wall, and then uh, just as I'm coming through, uh, reach out and pull me behind where the water pressure isn't so strong. And he said, sure, that'll be great. That's a good idea. So um, he did that. He got up to the wall, and he got up to the edge right where the water was rushing through the notch. And uh, I came up and uh, apparently was going much faster than he thought I was. And there was not enough time to pull me out of the stream. Uh, but he did stop me. And I said, OK, good, now just pull me out. And he goes, I'm trying. <laughs> but if I try to pull you, I'm also trying to hold on to the wall with the other hand. And he's got one hand all the way around my arm, trying to pull me. And my feet are starting to inch into the big waterfall swirly mess that was ahead of us. I couldn't feel the bottom anymore. It was very deep. And so here I am thinking, 
I don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> so the water is coming, swirling. My friend is saying things really scary like, I'm about to lose grip, I can't, we got to figure out what to do, I can't hold on much longer to either of the wall or you. Mm -hmm. And so finally I said, uh, just let me through, just let go and we'll see what happens. He's like, I don't want to do that, I don't want to be the one that kills you. <laughs> And I said, no, I think it's going to be okay. I had felt down into the thing, and I, it, I could tell that it was cement, and it was going to go downhill for a ways. I didn't know how long, but I thought, okay, I've been floating so far pretty well. And so finally I said, just let go. And just as I said that, a big whoosh of water came, and he lost his grip, and I went through. One giant step over nothingness. My feet were down like radar, just trying to reach as far down as I could. I couldn't touch anything. And then finally I go straight through. I swirl around with the water because it's kind of a whirlpool at the other side. And I swirl around and then my heels and my feet hit, the sa hit sand on the other side, this big hill of sand. And it catches my feet like an anchor and swirls my whole body around and I sit down plump on the edge of this big sand dune that's under all completely underwater and I said <laughs> come on it's fun and so he did he let go and he swirled himself through and uh, we skipped the beach we skipped the floating from then on we went straight to under we went straight to that little waterfall well Right under the, right over this waterfall, and there, maybe the reason the bridge, uh, maybe the reason the dam had been built was uh, there was a bridge over that uh, section, and so there's another uh, little tag on to the story about how one day we sat for four, five, six hours on the edge of that bridge peering over it going, we know it's deep enough. We can't touch the bottom. You jump. No, you jump. No, you jump. So finally we did it. We did it. One, two, three, four. And we jumped. That was fun. That was it. We survived that one too. Obviously. <laughs>